<laughs> Pokemon Joe <laughs> Toe. Is that yet? Everybody wants to be a master. Everybody wants to show their skills. Everybody wants to get there faster. Make their way to the top of the hill. Each time you try, gonna get just a little bit better. Each step you climb, it's one more step up the ladder. It's a whole new world we live in. It's a whole new way to see. It's a whole new place with a brand new attitude. But you still gotta catch them all and be the best that you can be. Pokemon Johto. It's a whole new world we live in. We live in. Just you gotta catch them all and be the best that you can be. Do, 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 Pokemon Johto. Pokemon Johto! And welcome to episode 17 of Shredded Cells. I'm your host, Alex Schmitz, and with me here today is Andrew Gleason. Hi there. Hello. K- Kenneth McNulty. We're already at 17. <laughs> Jeremy Zajak. I'd like to apologize for everyone for that horrible opening. Really, I just, <laughs> I am think so it, sorry, everyone. I think it was Please, a great I'm opening. So, it was good. We practiced. You guys did no, a good job. No, no, you guys are terrible and you should feel bad about yourselves. You're the one who it's, told us to go in cold. Hey, I am. That's true. I am. I did tell you to go in cold because the practice could only make you worse. Well, thanks. Uh, I think he just didn't want to listen to it twice. That was a little that harsh. That too. <laughs> and uh, we also have Mark Goldsmith. Hey, guys. And Clara Heimberger. Hey. All right. And yes, we are here Coming today in. to talk about the, mo- the movie Pokemon 2000. Oh, uh, the physics. And for those who, <laughs> for those who don't know, uh, we are part of TechHeads, which is part of AVW Productions, a media production organization here at Ohio University. We're one of many podcasts that they do, you know, video games, music, movies, all sorts of stuff. But of course, ours is the best because we produce so much content. Oh, yes. Indeed. And we're so hilarious, right, Jeremy? Ah! Indeed. <laughs> All right. So why don't we talk about uh, animation we've watched since last time? I guess for most of you, that will be basically animation in the last like three weeks or so. Um, but for Kenny and I, I guess just one since we were on last week's podcast. Yeah. So it hasn't changed much. But um. Well, what what has changed then, Kenny? Uh, <laughs> since actually, you're so so willing to volunteer. <laughs> I told you about it. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. My friend, uh, I was watching that. You know, the, have you guys heard of the Batman and Spider Man things? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, my friend showed me a thing called Gundar. Oh God! You've seen that then? Because yes. I've been watching. Why does that sound God. familiar? I have seen that. Yes. You would enjoy it. Trust me. Like I don't think. I don't know. I can't see Jeremy liking that. I, I saw like one or two episodes. That sounds like a challenge. It's actually challenge really accepted. funny. Imagine Conan, but different. <laughs> but, yeah. It's so stupid. It's so funny. This sounds really. I swear <laughs> to God, I've heard of this. Gundar. Gundar. He uses a Glock and shoots Wait. people. <gasps> this does sound familiar. Actually. This sounds really <clears throat> familiar. And it's gonna bother me. I'm gonna have to look this up when I get home. Nice. Uh, Andrew, what have you been watching? Okay, so last night my friend sat me down and made me watch the first, like, six episodes of Gern Logan. Duh, yes. Duh. Good. Fantastic. So I'm, like, hooked on that now. So Good. good. I'm it, glad you like it. It's all on Hulu, it. so there's no excuse uh, for anybody not to see oh, it. Oh, it's on Hulu? Okay, yeah, great it's, God, now it's I, on Hulu. Um, but the ads are bad. I feel like I should watch that. You've oh. never seen it. You probably should. It's actually really what good. What is um, wrong with you? I never... Nobody ever made me I mean, see it. Granted, I kept making jokes oh about the God. one girl, but that's the other thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I what pisses me off is she's flirting with both of them, and I'm like, that angers me. She's 14. What? She, oh yeah. So they, they, I heard about that joke. I heard about that long running joke. My friend explained that what, to me. What Team Rockets? What like 14 or 16? Well, so according to Clara, I don't know if she's telling the truth or if she's lying to us. God, I Clara. I don't. I do not tell lies. Clara never lies. Sometimes. <laughs> never lies what sometimes. What does that mean? Sometimes. Very cool. Uh, like, how far into it are you? Uh, what was the last thing we watched? We watched the... Um, okay, my friend spoiled two things for me Oops, in that no. series to get me to want me... To make me want to watch the end. He okay, said, did he spoil the one thing that... that the, the worst thing in the whole series? Well, okay, he's, wait a sec. Just spoiler alert if yes. you're going to say anything. Yes. I haven't said yes. it. Um, I don't care. So you want, okay. I, he, I'm, I'm sure someone's already told you this, though, about the series. Nobody he, knows. Well, he he used okay, this. then don't, don't say anything, then. 
Oh, you don't want me to say anything? All right. No, because we shouldn't spoil it for Kenny. Yeah, because so I don't, don't know anybody's together than you guys. It's, but you need to see it. Like, it's fantastic. By the next it. podcast, you should at least see the what? first five episodes. Yes, like, that, that's what my friend Is it only a one season? Thing? No, it's no. it's 26 episodes, I believe. Oh, that's not yeah. too And there's like yeah. 27. Seasons. Yeah. 27. Yeah. Oh, oh. yeah. So just so you know, Kenny, so you have to finish Fate Zero, finish Cowboy Bebop, and watch Grand Lagan. That's your Well, I've seen Cowboy Bebop. I'm just rewatching. But that is on my list. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I have my um, anime checklist. As for myself, uh, I haven't, I like Kenny, haven't really watched much s- since last week. Dundar. Um, we finished Fate Zero then, which was actually very good, and something that both Jeremy and Mark should see, since they uh, since they didn't do it on the last podcast. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? No, I w- I've been trying to watch through it. And, hey, I have a good excuse for not being well, at the last podcast. No, that, that's true. You You said you'd actually started it. Whereas Mark had had not seen even the first episode. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so you're proud of your your procrastination. Hold on, hold on. Being honest and being proud are two completely different things. Mark, but you, you said that was proud when you conviction. said that. I'm not gonna lie. Want to get your nose no, a little high? No. In the air? <laughs> wait, wait. Okay, fine, fine. I'm proud of my honesty. There. there. Okay, there. so he's proud of his honesty of not having any of your interest, Alex. Okay. Oh, Alex. By the way, did you change your headlight fluid? <laughs> yes, I changed my headlight fluid. Did you, did you pick me up the fluid? elbow grease? With the elbow, yes. Okay. Grease. Gotta go to the store, man. <laughs> so. All right. Uh, <laughs> Jeremy, what have you been watching? Well, I was, I've, I've been trying to keep up with Symbionic Titan on uh, Toonami. I've heard of that? It's actually fairly entertaining, so I've been impressed with it so far. Um, oh, is also, that the, uh... I have decided. Yes, it okay. is. I've also decided to do something that I thought I wasn't going to do. But I'm going to force myself to watch the last parts of uh, Cashier and Sins. Oh, yeah? Oh, God, it's so bad. I'm just going to force myself through it at this point, like though. A scale of 1 to 10, how bad is it? 1 being bad? Yes. About a 3. Wow. Wow. Because okay. well, I, I, I only, all I've seen of Cashier and Sins was the first episode. It was, it was slow, but it was an interesting premise, it at least. It's really really bad like angel cop bad not like angel, <laughs> angel cop <laughs> no, ranks not. in it like a two three is like boring territory two Wait, is like so disturbing. so if angel cop is a two then is sword for strange uh sword of sword for truth a one no sword sword for truth is still a two because sword for truth was What's worse one, than man? was worse than uh hey, angel is, cop maybe bad. it's a no, 1.5 it, but it's no, still not a one no I, I don't say i would not go that far because true sword for truth was hilarious with the uh, the enemy who was wearing the dead body of his enemies, <laughs> yeah, nothing, not not much in Angel Cop made me laugh. Whereas, like no. that uh, for, from that avenue, Sword for yes, truth was hilarious. Uh, I suppose it depends on how you, how you look yeah, at it. You know, three. Sword for Truth was better from a so bad it's good sort of vibe. But as far as like just being a movie, like just straight out, you know, Sword for Truth was literally incomplete. Well, at least Angel Cop had a. A some some sort of narrative which what we can, never finished. Which we never. So maybe maybe it's incomplete too. I don't know. You've I, never finished it. I did. How long is it? Uh, <laughs> six episodes. Oh, it's a show. I thought it was a movie. Oh, it's it's, a, it's, it was a movie. it's six OVAs, which oh. is like 40, 50 minutes. Well, how, what's number one then? Like, you guys have any of the worst anime uh, ever made? I my guess would be it's Mad Bull thirty four. I wouldn't say again. I wouldn't say it's the worst. Mad Bull thirty four. It doesn't really rate well on the scale because Mad Bull 34 just kind of transcends bad and just enters this whole new area of what am I watching? What what is this? Mad Bull 34 is. I'm gonna look it up. What is this? (laughs) No, but aside from that, uh, I haven't been watching too too much because I have I have exams from now until the end of the semester. Oh, that is that is depressing. I must say, Uh, Mark, what have you been watching? Hmm. Uh, One Piece. Ooh. I I always keep I up with the One Piece anime, and then also I've been watching uh, something really cool that I found was the trailer to the uh, new Pokemon Black and White Two, and I, that's not really a show, but it's like a six minute trailer that was animated, and it's beautiful. For people who have not seen it, you should go watch it because if the Pokemon anime was like that, everyone would watch it. It's yeah. beautiful. I actually really like video games that have like anime cutscenes. Like the Tales series uh, has I a tradition love of doing that. The Tales that. series, like Tales of Symphonia, is like one of my favorite games. Have you ever played ever. Fantasia? That's I, still my favorite. I need to. I actually have the ROM. That, but is I've that not for the it. Super Nintendo? Yes. Okay. Or is it Fanacom? I can never remember. I don't. I, I don't remember. I have the ROM. No, it's the Super Nintendo because I have the ROM for it on my phone. I just haven't played it yet. I see. Yeah, I've heard Symphonia is great. 
Um, or, uh, wh- why am I saying heard? I've I've beaten Symphonia and it is great. I love there. Symphonia. Um, by the way, Mark, I'm curious. Are you happy that? Because uh, I know that right now in the anime of One Piece, even though I haven't been watching it, that they're getting off of uh, Fishman Island, like they're finishing up. Finally, with that. Yeah. Fishman Island, and a lot of people agree with me, which I'm happy about. Um, there were some parts of Fishman Island that I really liked, but overall, it was really poorly animated. Mm-hmm. A lot of the like final attacks and the fight scenes, which yeah. weren't, they didn't have the impact that if you go back and watch scenes from either uh, Any's Lobby or Thriller Bark, like the moves don't have that same kind of yeah. like well, movement. I, I watched know? I watched the little clip of where they do all of their final attacks, which was awesome in the manga, but in the anime, they just don't put the same like budget into it. I guess it just looks a little off. Do you see how like sometimes like some of it was really good? And then other parts of it was like just, it just didn't look right. Right, like Usopp's looked really weird. I thought I thought they could have done a better job. Sanji's gonna, was, ter- Sanji's are you was terrible. The actual anime. Really I'm gonna mad. throw this right out here, right Mark. Now? I don't know if you agree with me or not, but uh, I've so I still think that Horty is too weak to be like a main vi- like as a character. He's too weak to be a villain. Yeah, not 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 strength wise, but like just as a character, he's just he's too generic. He was mainly just a, th- honestly, he was a throwaway villain just to show how much the Straw Hats have improved. Right, and the whole idea stuff. of Fishman Island is this whole, like, racism thing, and he just hates all the humans, and Fishman should be the best, and blah, blah, blah. Wait, he's, how long have they been very, on the island? Uh, pretty long. Actually, I heard from somebody that uh, when Fishman Island is, like, fully complete, it will actually be, like, the longest arc in the anime of One Piece with, like, over 50-some episodes. Which, which is, is, which is Hey, hey, it's the Soul Society. That, that's kind of sad, though, because it's also one of the weaker arcs. Right. Wait, fifty episodes for one. I feel like I have this. I have this distinct feeling though that this is going to be one of those we'll never speak of it again sort of things. (laughs) The whole arc is going to be filler. No, no, it's like a lot of it. Don't get me wrong. Uh, My opinion of Fishman Island is sort of that the beginning is pretty good, the middle sucks, and the end is cool. Um, But yeah, the middle really sort of drags it, and it's not bad per se. It just is not up to the quality of the other One Piece arcs. You know, like it ranks pretty low within One Piece arcs that necessarily make it bad, just not as good as the rest of the show. Um, and Clara, what have you been watching? Um, well, I also watched the Pokemon trailer, but a while back, and it was probably the reason why I bought the game. I had my doubts about the game, but I got Black 2 a couple weekends ago, and I completely fell in love with it. And what I've been watching recently, um, well, I've recently got back into Rose and Maiden. I finished the manga series, like, a couple years back, and then I found an OVA of it. And I remember seeing clips in it from it when I was like in eighth grade. I never went to it and I found it online and I realized, oh, I never, I never actually watched this. And it, it hurt my feelings quite a lot. It was so sad at some points, which I do like that if an anime can make me have emotions. What was it called strong. again? The Rose and Maiden. Rose and Maiden. Never heard of it's it. It's by um, the same people who made um, Chobits and um, um, uh, they're called Clamp. Oh, those guys, yeah. yeah. Clamp. It's it's really, it's pretty and also rather dark. Hmm, interesting. Um, mm. Very good. So uh, now we'll get on to our main discussion for this week, which is, Woo! of course, the film Pokemon 2000, the second in the many, many, many Pokemon uh, spinoff movies. Dun, 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 dun. Pokemon. I, my personal opinion, like from what I, I haven't seen like all of them. Like I think I saw up to like the the Jirachi one or the Deoxys one. <laughs> Destiny Deoxys. Yeah, that and the Jirachi one are probably the most recent ones I've seen, which are now like several years out of date. Um, but I think the like the original three movies are all pretty good. You have not seen the first one recently, then. It, That's it's, pretty it's, terrible. It's been think about it. It's been a while, but. I mean, like I said before, like I think I, I really love Mewtwo's story in the movie. Oh no, Mewtwo! Mewtwo's yeah, a cool shit, character. They should just made the whole movie about Mewtwo. I don't care about the people. It should have just been the story hey, of Mewtwo. Pokemon tears cure everything. Let's not. <laughs> oh my god! Oh god! I remember yeah. watching that when I was nine. It just going. This is horrible. It was Why? The biggest really? Biggest Why? Of the time. Really? Because as a nine-year-old, I didn't hate that. But was I was TSX? stupid it as a nine-year-old. It made me cry. I don't know. What you're well, talking Well, yeah, about. back back when I was a kid, it didn't bother well, me. But looking at it, looking at it now, though, it's like. That was the that's thing. painful. Yeah, the that ending is painful. 
That's just it, though. It would have actually been a really interesting oh, movie. It had just awesome. been just the story of Mewtwo. It's mostly the story of Mewtwo, but if it had been just the story of Mewtwo, well, it would have been an incredibly good you movie. You say that, oh, but yeah. we have to admit, when they when they get done with Mewtwo's story and they cut to Ash and he's fighting that random trainer, like, just the that fight scene is awesome. Oh, no, the animation, I was actually really impressed with the, in that movie. It's not, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not the best animation I've ever seen, but the fight scenes are actually done very well. Yeah. Well, that's something I found true transitioning into Pokemon 2000 as well. Like, when they get to the bits where, like, all the, f- the birds are fighting or Lugia is doing whatever, you know, it's very well animated. Um, well, you know, like you said, not the best, not like, you know, Cowboy Bebop quality or, you know, some of the better animation studios. But it still is much better than, you know, the most animation you see coming out of American that's studios. True, yeah. mm-hmm. That is true. Definitely. Um, so why don't we talk about, like, what was everybody's, like, first memory of this movie um, cause I do recall like actually going, I didn't see the first one in theaters, but I did see this what? and the third movie in I'm theaters. Uh, I remember that specifically. I remember seeing this movie, um, about, about a week after it came on the VHS because I was in, I was in the hospital after my tonsillectomy and I had to go back in because, uh, uh let's just say there was, I was bleeding. Ouch. From the throat. Ow. Lovely. Uh, so, yeah, I was in the hospitals, and my, my mom asked me, well, what do you want? And I said, like, to keep yourself entertained, I said, could you get me my Game Boy and a copy of this movie? She said, okay. So she rented the movie, and I watched it, and I was actually like, wow, this is a lot better than the first one. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about you, Kenny? Um, I'd say I saw it in theaters. I remember that my mom begrudgingly took us. To this day, she told us to get hate those Pokemon movies. But um, I really liked it back in the day. I'm like, this is so cool because watching the legendary birds finally fight and have a big thing was really cool in my eyes. And I can't remember. Was it the first one that Burger King had the whole, like, you get the golden tablet things out of the Pokeballs? Or is that the second movie? That was, in fact, both of them, I believe. Because I remember that for both of them. And I, like, tried. My, one of my friends got Charizard. And I got a and if stupid the, puff. The funny thing <laughs> is, though, they always hand out special Pokemon cards at, with yeah. the movie tickets as well. Because mm-hmm. I remember getting a Mew, a special Mew Pokemon Mew ones, card yeah. for yeah, the yeah, first I movie. That. I remember yeah, my special cool. Pokemon card was uh, the, I forget the name, the name of it. It was the painting one. Oh, uh, I Smurgle. Smurgle. Yeah. Oh, Smurgle, yes. yep. Oh, oh like my you. God. I still know these things. <laughs> 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 I got the ancient Mew card, but my dog ate it. Oh, I didn't get any to me. My uh, brother did. I, did, did he I wash it down with your homework? <laughs> no, he uh, also ate my Suicune and Celebi toys. What? Whoa. Wow, he's just going after your Pokemon stuff. He is. Don't replace me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, for me, um, I, going off of the toys idea, I remember specifically at Burger King for the second movie, they were giving out like these, they're just little like plastic uh, toys for all the various Pokemon. There were like a whole bunch of them. And, like, I actually got a Lugia one, which was, like, awesome because Lugia was the star of the movie. Yes, yes, yes. I remember it, like, l- light it up, and I think it could, like, squirt water out of it or something like that. The toy- actually, I kind of, yeah, I do remember those. Yeah. Back when the toys were actually good. Those were cool. Oh, yeah. uh, what about you, Andrew? Um, my parents never took me to see a Pokemon movie in theater because they're, like, they don't want, they straight up told me, I don't want to sit through that. <laughs> that looks stupid. <laughs> I'm like, honest. but I'm like, no, I, I, I thought it was awesome. So I remember... Uh, Getting the getting the VHS and watching that like twenty times. Um, I think that one was my favorite as a kid because I didn't like the one with Entei that much. And that one was really weak. Like I didn't, honestly, yeah. it was hard to sit through. Was that, that one. the third one? Or? Yeah, it yeah, was the, the third, third one. one. I, and I liked the Mewtwo one as a kid, but I was like the mystery uh, of unknown. The, the, I the one, the third one. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree that the third one's probably overall weaker than the other two. The one bit I do remember though is the fight between Entei and Charizard, which was amazing. I. Oh yeah, that was cool. Hey, that, man, that part. I just remember oh, trying God. to say. I just I remember I even as a kid I'm like this is oh man I re, like the for the one right before it, like barring all the the some of the bad jokes in 2000 <laughs> 2000 was actually a relatively decent movie and it's still it's still a relatively decent movie. Yes, get you, to uh, physics. get to that one. It's like oh this is bad. This yeah. is really bad. I just the one thing I didn't like about the 2000. I'm sorry, Mark, were you? No, it's okay. Yeah, go. Well, I was just saying that the, uh, the I just didn't feel very good about the villain was really weak if he was even the villain because oh, he seemed he like was, all of eight seconds. He was oh, like in there in the beginning. Yeah, he's kind of thrown in there just to be like, I'm the Pokemon yeah, I mean, catcher. He, he started it and hey, then hey. nothing. Because I thought it'd be so much cooler. Personally, I feel like the feel like the villain should have been like Gary Oak. Ah, <laughs> 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 but just just because you can't ignore his girth. <laughs> Somehow wow. worked that joke in. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But anyway, Gary Oak would have been a hilarious villain just because oh it would gosh. it would actually fit within his character. Yeah. Just to be just to be that be that guy. Hey, Dr. Ash. That guy. Yeah. I'm gonna catch these things. I don't care if I destroy the earth doing it. Yeah, I feel <laughs> like when he caught Ash, though, he wouldn't let him walk free because the villain's like, "I'll let you and all your Pokemon walk free in my airship." 
Yeah, that. I mean, <laughs> on the one hand, at least he's like, because he didn't mean to capture them, so at least he's like somewhat courteous. But then, like, he he's just like so surprised when they start breaking the birds out of their cages. He's like, what? You should have like at least dropped them off. Was anyone else? Bo- I mean, yeah, I mean, really. It might have only been me, but was anyone else bothered by the airship? The size of it? No. <laughs> not even just the size. The just how ridiculous. Yeah. I yeah. like yes. that. I thought that it was a floating. For those of you who have good not character seen the movie, developments, it's a floating sphere with with steel girders coming off of it with propellers sticking on the ends that spin it about maybe a rotation a minute. Yeah, I wasn't bothered by the, the mosaic like on the ceiling. No, no. I was bothered by the propellers a little yeah. bit. It's like uh, okay, propellers. Yes, there are like there are, you, if they had you shown like rockets or at least if the propellers were like spinning faster or something, it wouldn't have bothered me. But as it stands, it's like, yeah. oh my god, it's why the power would of love you? Yes. Also, <laughs> it's what, the power the of th- egotism. Also, the other, thing that bothered, the other thing that bothered me is why was it so big? Like, they, like no, no, they even showed like the size in it. of the legendary birds. This thing, it was like a thousand times bigger than they were. It was like a fly. It was like it a, has to like hold all the ammo. What I expected was that he would have nice, but I expected him to have like defense Pokemon or something to help rock guard like things he captured. But there's only the legendary birds. Like he was the legendary capture. Where was all of his other captures? Maybe they're he's in the too basements. rich for that. Yeah. Touché. Well, yeah. And his whole point was he didn't use them to battle. He used yeah. he just collected them. So they're off which, in a museum somewhere. Which is, or which is what I kind of want to talk they about. With him with villainizing that guy who just wants to catch the Pokemon. Is that Ash's though? When the Pokemon trainers spent their whole lives doing it. And then he just doesn't make them fight each other. And we villainize that. The, th- the difference is, though, is that uh, from what it sounds like, at least within the stories, what they were trying to get across is... Um, Ash, he does catch them, and he's still, and yes, they fight, but supposedly, supposedly, uh-huh. the Pokemon fight of their own free will, uh-huh. which is why Charizard always just sits on his uh, well, backside. because Charizard's like, I'm a dragon. Don't question me. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. care. That's huge. <laughs> hey, I do what I want. I'm no, a dragon. It wouldn't no, my respect. No, but uh, supposedly, they, they act of their own free will, and they do that. They, they fight because they feel like it, and it's apparently it's entertaining for them. I for, guess. Also, the other thing is, though, this is something that I, a lot of people have pointed out, though, in the past. When the poke and the Pokemon fight in actual Pokemon battles, they usually don't beat each other. They they'll knock each other unconscious, but that's as far as they go. Yeah. When you see the fights against the wild Pokemon, they tend to get really, really uncomfortable. Like they 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 go beyond just knocking them unconscious. They actively go out of their way to really hurt each other. Hmm. Like hmm. case in point, the the whole thing with the sparrows. Anyone remember that from the oh, first episode? Yeah, when they keep yeah. Yeah. Pikachu, like when they're. Oh yeah, 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 it, it, yeah. It's not. That's not even the first time they show that though. They show it a lot of times throughout the anime. I think the scene with Mankey also oh, comes yeah. to mind. I remember when he was trying to catch him. And Those are also very uh, agitatable Pokemon. That is true, <laughs> but remember Pidgeotto. The Mankey took his hat. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that. <laughs> that. No. Let's let's not remember Pidgeotto. I yeah, don't remember I, that. It seemed to me like the 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 main reasons by. W- why the villain was wrong, quote unquote, was number one that apparently capturing these birds is going to destroy the world. Well, Seriously, that, that's that's <laughs> yes, more than no, one. Exactly. That's that's actually been made a point in like in the show itself. There's not just one of each. Were legendary. they just the legendary legendary birds? No, these, were just, the these just happen to be special ones. ones. These, these just happen the to be. Ones these just happen to be special ones that on were just islands. like yeah, just on those islands. Where do the rest live? All over the place, apparently. Well, like, but I, I, I mean, I understand within the games that there might be like multiple versions of them. No, but even in the anime, there's multiple Lugias. Really? Yeah. Hmm. This was actually oh, yeah. a, this was actually a plot. They were actually trying to save a baby Lugia in one of the episodes. I remember that. Yeah. I don't even. This is. I don't even know how I know this. I, know, I, I, I stopped watching the anime a long time I, ago. I remember that episode too. I, I, I randomly watched it and I saw that and I was like, oh wow, okay. It's like it makes sense, but these just happen to be really special ones because apparently they're they're blocking uh, the super tidal wave of excuse me the super flying. Uh, Underwater <laughs> oh, current. Water current. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, that one. The levitating current. Well, maybe yeah. that's why he wants them, because these are the, like, actual legendary yes, birds. Yeah. It's, oh, come on. He had to know the fucking oh, story <laughs> behind it. <laughs> I mean, I just assume they're immortal beings, and that if they died, it disbalanced the world. That's what I took from it, but no, I yeah. was wrong. No, th- and that's just it, though. He just, like, went out of his way. Hey, you know what? There are plenty of Lugias in the world, but I'm going to ask this specific one, because I actually know how to get at it. And I don't care if I destroy the world in the Actually, process because I'm in a flying see, airship. And yeah. a calming voice that Lugia did. Very calming the, voice. The, yeah. This is going to be really random, but like one of my favorite parts in the whole movie is when everyone's like the the birds are breaking out, and you know, uh, like they they don't know how, like they just keep attacking the shields, and 
uh, Jesse and James take out like wheezing. Wheezing just starts headbutting yeah, <laughs> the shield, and then doesn't work. And what Ma- mouth just like get up, you big palooka. <laughs> yes. and I'm just like I'm like palooka. meow meow. Where are you from? Like, what, what are like, you? Using, I always like he's like every time more. they're mean to wheezing, I feel bad. It's like guys, he's a, he's a floating malignant tumor. Give him a break. <laughs> His life is bad enough as it is. I, 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 I think because of Meowth's accent, the, the what they gave him, he's just my favorite character. Just oh no, definitely. Done. Remember his backstory in that one episode? It's actually really yeah, sad. Because, yeah, because because he wanted to learn how to speak human because because. Uh, you want to impress, wanna impress. The Persian. Yeah, but the thing is, that means he could li- any Pokemon can learn English, technically, if you just try hard <laughs> enough. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's what well, well, think about cer- like the psychic ones can. Well, that's because they're psychic. Psychic. They can, yeah. they can I, 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 I also like how I was thinking from like a Pokemon's perspective, and I said, "Speak human rather than English." Yes. Speak human. <laughs> human <laughs> me, speak. me, me, speak human. Speak one human. Day. Yeah. Man. I'm just gonna point speak out that um, well. Slow King was the best character of the entire. Like, Slow King was. Like, I could yeah. use yeah. Pan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, even though he was in it, for, he was in it almost as much as the collector guy. Yeah, but he's the best though. He's the most personality. Because he was him. really entertaining. That he was, was. the pants he thing. Was funny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then the other thing I was gonna bring up about the collector was just that you know instead of uh, capturing the Pokemon inside. Pokeballs, he's capturing inside these electric, you know, cages or whatever. No fair cheating. Well, and it seems like you have to buy those. That, that's one thing that we've never learned. Like, what what goes on inside a Pokeball? Like, what is what are, are they in some sort of magical paradise land inside of a Pokeball? Are they squished like about chickens? Yes. Yes. According, about chicken according to the according to the um uh, according to the to one of the mangas, apparently it's just kind of like. It's kind of just like a sitting room, essentially. Just a bed there. Uh, you could, so according to one of the, I can't remember which manga. So it, it like is. turns them into energy, and just the energy's like. Yes, but you could apparently they're also see through as well, so you can see how your Pokemon's doing. What? Really? Huh? What? Really? I'm not wow. making this up. Yeah, I've read the manga the a little manga. bit. Yeah, the Pokemon special slash adventures, depending on. Yeah. Which so your Pokemon one just you sits read. around and relaxes. Pretty much. It just chills there. I like huh. I like robot chickens answer better. Yeah. No, but but here's the other thing though too is you gotta remember, at least when they're in the Pokeballs, there's like a 50-50 chance they'll someday make it out of there unless they just happen to get sent into a PC never to be seen again. <laughs> Which is depressing. But, See, but the, the way so the collector often. makes it sound, yeah, you're gonna just sit in those giant electrical force fields for the rest of your lives. Yeah, that's it true. Does sound awful. Also, I'd like to. This is this is something else I pointed out during the movie, and everyone else made a. Everyone else just kind of kind of realized it too. In every single every single Pokemon movie I've watched, Ash uh, full body tackles a barrier and then gets the crap beaten out of him as a result. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he does it in the in the first movie, trying to tackle Mewtwo. I think. Why would he like, what was tackle, he trying to gain? Yeah, tackling the most powerful Mewtwo. being, just trying to tackle it. Like Come what? Me, if it actually worked, I would have lost it. But yeah, there's nothing he could have done. It'd be like it'd be like he was fighting Moltres, and it's like. I'm gonna get you. They're just like <laughs> rappled the bird. It's like it's on fire. On <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was funny because, it, like, the, the way Mewtwo reacted, like when like someone else had their had one of their Pokemon try to attack Mewtwo. Mewtwo flung that sucker like like across Damn. the room. He didn't even bother with Ash. He just let Ash just hit the ground. I don't care. Right. Pretty much. What, what was the barrier he tackled in 2000? For some reason, I'm like blank. It was it was the, one of the cages. Zapdos That's right. Was, yeah. Why? No, it was Moltres. It was Moltres. Because yeah. Zapdos zapped Moltres right after he yes, got out. Yeah, because Zapdos was a giant jerk. That's yeah, what I wanted to point out. Zapdos, like, I like him, but he's the worst. <laughs> Z- Zapdos was just a Zapdos, jerk in the whole movie. It like it has the advantage over all the other birds, though, it since it, it's electric type. Oh, no, that's my so. favorite thing, though. It actually has a really... Oh, God, here comes my nerd. It has a really low special attack, so it really doesn't have as big yeah, an advantage. Yeah, but this is a, but this is a TV like show. Punch. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but uh, speaking of which, though, Looper can punch. learn Ice Punch. Thunder Punch. Oh, wait, Looper doesn't have hands. Hey, it's little yeah, claws. Yeah, that thought. <laughs> it's claw. Are you talking about wait, what I, Pokemon? I would just like to say Pokemon nerds are the best. Oh yeah, I think said Articuno can learn Ice Punch. No, Wooper can. Wh- who's Wooper? It's a it's a silver Pokemon. It's that little newt thing with the tail, no arms. It can arms. learn no. punch. I know. I'm, I'm Actually, sure I'd recognize Paul, it if I in saw fact, it. I'm pretty sure that Poliwhack can learn Ice Punch, too. Is that the deformed <laughs> version of Wobbuffet? No, it's the deformed version of, uh, what is that? It's the, it was the first ground and water type. Uh, oh. That's a thing. Oh, Mudkip? No, Mudkip? no. Mudkip no, is not the that. first ground and water type. Before that. Uh, Wait, question real quick. Is there any uh, ground flying type? 
There might be, but I don't. I actually. That seems like a contradiction. Nope. Okay, just make sure. Contradiction. contradiction. <laughs> You're a walking contradiction. Exactly. You're a Scott Korean. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, it's wow. Yeah, juicy. Um, and Clara, I don't think we ever heard uh, what happened to you with your first experience with the movie. So I saw it in theaters. It was, was wonderful. Zing. I went with my little brother and my mom. Nice. And I'm pretty sure I got an Articuno card out of that, what? but I'm not Whoa. sure because I have an Articuno card at home in my giant binder of Pokemon <coughs> cards. So I nice. Sweet. But uh, I can't remember if it was from that or I got it in a little pack. Maybe that's where I got my Zapdos because I'm wondering where I got my holographic Zapdos. Nice. And but, but like, one, one the bad them. guy, like I wanted to say this earlier, but um, the bad guy himself um, in the Latios Latios movie. Um, in the end, in the credits, Annie and Oakley are looking through a book, and you can see him in the book, like as like a collector of some sort, and what? they're reading about him. And I'm huh. like, oh, I remember you. There's like a so tie-in. Meta. Uh, but I was look at say, them. Can them. I just take a moment to point out the beauty of that joke in the beginning of the movie? Which which the joke? Krabby Krabby. Yeah, the Krabby uh, one. Yeah. <laughs> the best part, like Mark, do you remember that joke? We already told you about it. Yeah, yeah. No, I just like the. Dinner I paid party. attention to it. Yeah, <laughs> the dinner part. I acknowledged it. Everyone, yeah. sh- it was it was great because apparently nobody else remembered this. Nobody remembered no. this joke. No, because when we first heard it, the the exact reaction in the room was what? And, and that was the one time in the movie we rewound it because well, we needed to see it again. Yeah. To, I missed we it. To, we have to we have to catch that again. We have to make sure that's what yeah, they she, said. So she said she had Grammys. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> it's like wow. Madre de Dios. I know. Did did your mom like listen to that in the theater and just be like? I'm sure she oh. lost it. She lost at all of those things because she knows. We didn't understand. I, don't, I can't remember. I just remember my mom being there, and not being happy. That's all I remember. <laughs> Her unhappiness. And, and, and this is this was the weird thing. That was a four kids dub too. Yeah, and four was, kids is known for like making like super like PG stuff. Yeah, and that four kids thing was a pretty forward joke. Yeah, that was uh, there was there was another uh, thing. I that, hate you so much, Kenny. There, there, I really hate you. There was something else that Laura and I noticed when we watched it. It was it was with Jesse and James, and. Oh yeah. Jesse says something about how, uh, like, that's why I don't get close to people because in relationships you get hurt. Oh, uh, the well, no, thing? in no, in in relationships with the opposite sex you get hurt. And then James says that's why I stay out of that kind of thing. And then Meowth yeah. is like, he says something. What does Meowth say? Oh, he, he says, says that's that's why why each other. Other. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But I'll, but and it was really funny because Laura looked at me. She's like. Is is that insinuating something about James or or what? And like to me, I'm just imagining that as like James was just saying like I don't like relationships in general. But the way it was said, I was like, Ooh. I'd like to remind everyone. I don't everyone, know. I'd like to remind everyone that in the original anime, there is a there is an episode that never made it to America. Mark knows what I'm talking about because I could see it on his face. Uh, James grows a pair of breasts. Yep, I yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that. I've seen on YouTube. Yeah, I've seen the video. Yeah, band the episode. beach episode. Yeah. What? There are two band Wait, episodes, actually. But there what's are. the context with that? All I know is they were the trying thing. to sneak they into were some in a contest. contest. Yeah. I thought how, it was a joke. I saw it online. I didn't think it was real. <laughs> it's don't real. question no, no, it. No, this, thing. this actually they happened. Were, it, they were just kind of like blow up things, I guess, because he does inflate them more to like rub it in Misty's face. Literally, like, oh, oh my look, gosh, yeah, really? mine are bigger than yours ever will be, and stuff. And she's all like angry face. She's like, she's all <laughs> like, yeah, great. I'm ten. Like, give me a break. Yeah, uh, and, <laughs> and actually, that I pointed that scene out during the movie, Mark, because I remember what you're talking about. Because apparently, in the Japanese version of the scene, they actually say something about them being brother and sister. Which is apparently but, but that contradicts true. an earlier episode. That contradicts a lot of things. Actually. Well, because I remember, yeah. I vaguely Colin remember. An, that yes, my that childhood. One, like, I vaguely remember one where it's like talking favorite. about James's childhood. Exactly, like, that's the one I just mentioned. That's the one I was. But, just talking oh, yeah, about. yeah, but the no thing way. is that in yeah. in I forgot about that. And I apologize if like I say something wrong and this offends anyone. But like I, but basically, um, I know in like Japanese culture, like calling someone your brother or sister doesn't actually mean like they're your brother or sister. It can just mean like you view them as Best friends. like you're, they're so close that you feel as though they are your brother or it's sister. It's possible. That's I mean, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, because little kids it. will call like people my age to be like, oh, Nechan, older sister, just right. because I'm older than them. And they're only 14, so I mean, 
Yeah, apparently. <laughs> and, still, and, and, and Brock is the most manly 13 year old yes, I've ever seriously. seen. Can I, can I there go? is not enough Brock, and this is the this is the the biggest failing. Of There's this a movie. disturbing there is, amount of yes. Like, there is a Brock. disturbing lack of Brock in this movie. He's at least and in it though. <laughs> no, he is in it for about six it. seconds, and it's probably one of the funniest six seconds in the movie. He is just having a spaz attack right behind Professor Ivy. <laughs> you see what I the forgot Indian. about her. Tracy's yeah, in the movie too. for all of like three scenes even though he's with them for the whole I'd time. I'd like to yeah, yes. I'd like to point out though that nobody cares cuz nobody, nobody cares. cares about Tracy. But at least they like Brock. Tracy. They spent so much The only good thing about Scyther. Tracy is that he has a scyther. That's the only good thing That's about awesome. Tracy. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. How did they even meet him? One of oh, uh, another one of my I like to draw things. That's great, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> they meet him in Johto. Uh, right. uh, another it's one like of my Kyle. favorite scenes is uh in the very beginning, where they're all in the ship and they just like bring out all their Pokemon oh, and yeah. chill out, Snorlags. and it's so funny because like well, another, in another part they bring out Charizard and like the the he starts freaking out. He starts like blowing fire everywhere. So he puts him back in the Pokeball and then he takes out Snorlax instead and the ship just starts capsizing. Like why would they, why do you think it's a good idea to bring out Snorlax? Well, like, why don't you at least throw Snorlax into the water? <laughs> what do you say? Oh, well, I guess he's more fat. So. Yeah, but he was huge. Remember, Snorlax is not native. Snorlaxes are not native to Kanto apparently. Yeah, and something we discussed right. quite a bit I when we were that. watching the movie is how apparently Snorlax's size changes based on how oh, yeah. the animators are feeling that day. Oh, yeah. Yes. Snor- they, I swear to God, if you watch the anime, Snorlax has changed from size from being not much bigger to Ash to being bigger than all of Ash's Pokemon standing on top of each other. Right. With it, no, and I'm not like within well, the, the first same episode, episode. He was huge. He's, he's enormous mountain. in the first episode. Well, even, even think about in the in even, the little Pikachu movie beforehand, he looks pretty big compared to all but, the rest of the Pokemon. But that's just it. Though. That might be a different Snorlax. But Ash's Snorlax, in particular, has changed size no less than 28 times. Like in the episode where have, his Pokeball breaks, he hands. is absolutely enormous. Like he's probably taller than Ash, Misty, and Brock standing on top of each other. And then in the movie, he's just barely taller than anyone. Yeah, pretty he's much. really small. He's smaller than the boat. Yeah. Which yeah. makes sense, but in some episodes. Yeah, he other episodes. The same size as Charizard in that one, though. Um, so. I did actually want to just bring up the, the little Pikachu mini movie that played before uh, the. Uh, he challenged God. Uh, yes. That was uh, the best part ever. Uh, that was the best part. Do you remember this, Mark? Uh, wait. It, Mark, do you remember this <laughs> in the movie? In the little Pikachu movie before the actual movie started? Did you see that part? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, where um, where Pikachu goes and decides to challenge God by shooting lightning back at him to like deflect it from the sky, which was awesome. <laughs> it had to be done. I didn't like that whole mini movie. the The one in the first Pokemon movie was a much better mini movie. It was Pokemon better. Vacation. I don't remember this the one. Wasn't one was bad. It just was. It, I did not like it. It was just mad. I did not like it. Did not like it. In the first one, Charizard got stuck, and they had to save him. Yeah, that was actually oh. a little sad. I liked it. It was sad. That whole scene with Bulbasaur and uh, Snubble though was. Just just spectacular. Oh, and then the, the, the first one. In the first one with the eyeballs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember laughing really hard at that. I just I haven't seen it so long. I can't remember. I don't remember the I, first No, I do remember that long. at all. I remember like the premise, but I don't remember specific things. I just remember they're on vacation. I remember <laughs> the Pikachu ride shoe yeah. race. That was pretty epic. Yes. Oh, that was epic. Be, oh. Yeah. And then the Squirtle well, was racing that. another water Pokemon. Like, I think it was a Meryl, actually. Or was it a Zoomeril? It was a Meryl. Okay. I so was know. that like the first time we'd seen a Johto Pokemon? No, uh, no. Johto. The first time we saw a Johto Pokemon was in the first episode. Togepi. Oh, with Ho Oh. Well, Ho Oh, yeah, but I mean Togepi was the first one. No, but it, no, it was definitely Ho Oh. People actually were, knew what it was like in the first. Well, I mean, episode. yes, but I mean, the actual Pokemon actually have interactions with others. He in... did interact with them. <laughs> he had a he went rainbow. Call. <laughs> he didn't no. Oh. Oh, he, is that? I forgot about that. In the too. first, yeah, first the episode, bird that nobody knew what it was. No, no, the, actually, people. The fans actually knew what it was. I don't know how they got yeah, this information, say. but they knew what it was called already. I did for a while. I was like, the mysterious bird. No, no. And then everyone's like, oh, yeah, it's, it's this Pokemon. How do you know that? Yeah. What did you do? The hack in some military also, database? Also, then again, I, if I remember Pokemon correctly, like back, back before, like I think it was like five or six years before the Phantom Menace came out for Star Wars, they were selling Jar Jar Binks action figures. What? Uh, I think I remember this. I swear to God, I think I remember this being a thing. Is this like, random Jar Jar Binks? Who is this? Wait, wait, wait. We can't mention Star Wars the now naive because I will go on things. Because <laughs> I will go on Given recent Star events. Wars. Yes. Um, uh, one thing I definitely wanted to mention was 
Uh, I, I believe this is something that was just added in the English version. Remember how the cool little opening comes up? It says Pokemon 2000, and then it gets into this little rock, you know, uh, the bridge. Like, yes. And they're like, there's a bunch of different colors in this awful Photoshop. The yeah, power of say, one uh, comes it like in. It's done in PowerPoint. That is like, put, <laughs> yes. wait, when we were watching it, we thought that was the stupidest thing. We're just like, where did that come from? <laughs> Nobody even. Re- the power of one. I don't even know why they put that in. It's nowhere on the cover. Nobody ever refers to this movie as the power of one. Why does this? Why is this here? Actually, I don't know. Well, I mean, the power of one, the chosen one. He's the frozen one. You know. Oh god. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh hey, yeah. Maybe oh, one yeah. pun per movie. The frying pan though was the best one though. I'm gonna okay. turn a frying a pan, pan into a drying pan. At least Brock pulled it off. That's that was. A, I actually chuckled at that one. But the frozen one was. So, well, fr- I first off, I do not one. like. I do not like Ash's voice actor. Yeah. He yeah. sounds like he sounds like an early Naruto. Yeah, the, the smoke. Like, I don't get why didn't Lugia let him ride his back to get the stupid stone? I like, know. Well, no, my I, back you, you could you could make the argument that Lugia didn't want to do that because he was off fighting the three birds. But he, he did it. Really did. But he did it on the way back. He really got didn't fight them off. Though like, I'd like I'm to a, point that out. No, yes he did. No, he, he, well, he was he was deflecting. No, he deflected one attack. He deflected. He deflected one attack. Charizard and Squirrel. Were do- no, Charizard and Pikachu were doing most of the work. Charizard and Pikachu eh. really did. He could have rode Charizard when, when Charizard's yeah, no. not sitting. He's, he's just that's he's another wrecking good point. everything. That's yeah. a, that's another good point that it, that uh, we've brought up more than once. Oh, gee, it's not like Ash doesn't have half a dozen flying Pokemon. Yeah, well, that's what I said. Like, where's this Pidgeotto? Well, exactly. Like, I think okay, oh, it? it's fair no. that he doesn't fly in the Lugia to get to the Ice Island or whatever. But why doesn't he fly in Charizard? I mean, he's he's out there helping him drag this stupid sled thing. Yeah, like, why is Charizard dragging fly. a sled? Yeah, fly. Come yes, on, you convinced Charizard to help you. Yeah, I was you might as well just fly there. And yeah. when the ice it's, cracks underneath his feet, Charizard is the only one he recoils into the Pokeball. Recalls, ball. recalls whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like he doesn't care about the rest of them. Like, you can all drown. Oh, hey. No, oh, hey remember? He could have yeah, jumped you know that. Gra- you know how grass types are weak to ice, and that's probably frozen water? Uh, yeah, I don't well, care about Well, we've you, already Dinosaur. established, though, that when Team Rocket falls into the water from hundreds they of feet in the air, death, it doesn't though. hurt them at all. But so they're this, Team oh Rocket. <laughs> they so they accepted death. These are, yeah, people like, these are people who I'd like to remind you survive getting blasted into orbit on, a, over, on a daily basis. Well, this no. is true. No, I think I justified that because I think I said because the, the ice shift was so sudden that the water was still probably like tropically well, warm. Well, okay. So. It might no, have been warm. It, though. But it would have been yes, a matter of surface tension. Yeah, that, now like that, concrete. if we just ignore the fact that they just broke the laws of physics and accepted death. Hey, yeah, they're like, we're going to die. And then they hit like, no, I know. It, it, that was And that was the point that, at the like, I remember when I first watched this movie, it's like, well, here's the real heroes of this movie. It's not, they are. I know. Not and Slowking breaks the fourth barrier, fourth wall to show us that, they, you know. And they Slow do King that more than once. Because even, they because Team Rocket is more than aware this is a movie. Look at us. We're on the big screen. That's right, I yeah. love that part. I just, I was like, ah, I see what you did there, And, and then I love it right after that, Ash says, I'll catch it on VHS some other time or something like I'll that. I'll catch it on video. I'll catch it on video. <laughs> well, the thing is, uh, I'm going to point out something we brought it up yet. The best part is when they sail the boat up the mountain. Uh, <laughs> up uh, the mountain. Because uh, they go up the sail and uh, suddenly go up all of the steps. Like, you know, for that's, yeah, that's how that, th- What this movie has taught us is that all you need is a rubber raft and a propeller on the back, and you can go up a mountain in the process of about five minutes. Yep. It works. And they were pretty, like, when they were doing it, they accepted it. They're like, this is normal. Yeah, this is Let's totally what happens. <laughs> you know, exactly. I, I'm... After a certain point, though, in Pokemon, it's like, well, I'm watching a show about fire-breathing monsters that are able to produce electricity inside their own bodies and are able to vomit up. And every single, almost every single one of them is able to, of producing horrible toxins from inside of their body. And I'm worried about the laws of physics. Well, yep. frogs I and think eels I, I think can do two of those things. What? Frogs and eels can do some of no, those things. No, I'd like to point out, though, that almost every single Pokemon can learn toxic, except for really? three. Really? Yeah. Interesting. The only three I believe that can't are like Magikarp, Sunkern, and there's one other one, and I can't think of it. Ditto? Ev- yeah, it's Ditto, I think. But every other one can learn Toxic. Yeah. Pikachu can learn Toxic. Yes. <laughs> Jigglypuff can learn Toxic. <laughs> another joke that I really Where? loved that uh, that came right before they jumped off of Lugia was the, when James said, uh, oh. we need to be on Weight Watchers. I yeah. chuckled. <laughs> like, that was legitimately that. funny. That was funny. Yeah, because she's like, we weigh too much. But I, I agree with Let's what Jeremy... Weight Watchers. <laughs> I agree with what Jeremy was saying, like, 
Ash really doesn't do much over the course of this movie. He, he, he whines a lot. No, that's what I'm trying to find out because I don't remember this movie. I'm Except like, I, I did have to laugh a little bit when he said, hey, I'm not ready to be the chosen one. I said, well, he's got a point there. The last time he decided he tried to save the world, he got killed. <laughs> so. that, that, whole, that whole part between where Ash was like, I'm going to be the chosen one. Oh, I don't know if I can do it. Like, I'm not going to do it. Oh, well, wait, actually, no, I can do it because you guys are right. I'm the best and I'm a Pokemon trainer. And then the Lara, frozen one right, joke. On, right after that, Lara goes, "Wow, Ash is having more like emotional, Lucian. emotional like changes than like a freaking pregnant woman." <laughs> and I, I just started cracking up. I was like, he, "He just has the most mood swings." Well, I just love how how long it took him to figure out like, and then the world shall turn to Ash. Yeah, and then the he just turns straight to him. Like, anyone else? To Ash. Ser- seriously, that Slow King's just staring at him. Yeah, like, he's like, Ash. for like a good two minutes on screen, you could just see Slow King just like, staring at him. You know, who's the, the cho- uh, Everyone's just stumbling around. Who's the chosen one? The world will turn to ash. You just see Slow King just staring at the Turns Are you guys really this yeah. stupid? I imagine yeah. a bunch of people. For God's sakes, face. I'm Slow King. Because it's not that hard. And then no, then Lugia pops up. The world will turn to ash. Turns. And they still don't get <laughs> it for like another ash. twenty seconds. And Slow King's just staring at them. Are you all really this stupid? Well, I mean, you could <laughs> read it in, in the literal sense, but you know. But his name was Ash. I know. That's he the is, problem. It's sort of a yeah, squidward. It, let's let's be completely frank. It's 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 when his name was Ash. Slow King made mention to it multiple times. The he made kind of, he kind of emphasized a little heavily on the whole. I wonder turn how to that, Ash thing. I wonder how that works in the Japanese version because Clara, you told me that his name is Satoshi right in, after the creator in the real uh, in in the Japanese version. So I wonder is it still just Ash in the prophecy? Or is it, it do they somehow fit in a different Satoshi. naming thing? <laughs> it's just the world like, turn into Satoshi. The world, the I've, I've got a feeling oh. that, that there's a part of Satoshi that probably translates to some yeah, sort of... Yeah, probably the kanji or something. It's probably just something unpleasant. Not uh, For those of you who are named Satoshi, I apologize. I don't actually... What I'm assuming, because I'm an, I'm an ignorant human being, is that some part of the word Satoshi uh, might translate to something less... Like a, something unpleasant like ash or fire or death or something. <laughs> or death. I want to be death. called death. <laughs> nice. I don't um, know his name is a treadnut. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, and what did you guys think of the whole little uh, misty, melody, romantic subplot oh my we had God. going? Yeah. It's, it's less a romantic subplot, boyfriend? more of a romantic tumor. It reminds he's me a of boy and he's my friend, but he's not my boyfriend. It it think it's a melody, oh my God, Where's she was a straight up <laughs> I know what you Girl. want to say. <laughs> no, it made me think of, a, what is it, a chowder? He, she kept going, like, you're not my boyfriend, like, the whole time. And I was like, okay. She's not my girlfriend! Yeah, it's like that, but reversed. <laughs> but it's, like, it's like, wow, Melanie, you're a you're a terrible person. Yeah, like, seriously. She was really catty the whole time. She was, and I, kind of, I thought that was funny. But I, there was no resolution to that, I'm like, just like, at oh, all. I, I know it's a kid's show. But it's like, oh my gosh, it's so obvious that they like each other. Just, just, just do something. Just I know. Just, hey, but they hey, come on, life. Mark. Guess what? They still haven't done anything about it. They really haven't. They in, never in do. In Ten years. That's just, what I'm trying to say. There's they, no resolution. Have, the only thing that's happened is that Ash has gotten younger than her now. <laughs> so they dropped it like it's hot and left it. Apparently. Actually, that's what I got because this is the only time they really, really acknowledge it. Even right. though it's well, painfully obvious. Because Misty yeah. says at the end, like, because he like. Because he needs me or something like that. It's like also there's I can't remember what it was at one point though she even forgot why she was following Ash in the first place, and then all of a sudden I don't remember what episode it was. It's like I wonder I can't even remember why I'm following him anymore. And people teased her about it, and then all of a sudden she remembered. Oh, it's right because he still owes me a new bike. Oh did, yeah, did he, like his pickup line. Did he ever like give no. that back no. to her? No, Nurse Joy fixed it, and that's why Misty left at the end of. Kanto. So she left the Kanto because she finally got her bike back? No, after Johto, I lied. Because she was still, there in Kanto and Johto. Like, the thing is, like, she's like, got my bike back. See ya. Like, that's the whole goal. <laughs> uh-huh. like, this, this was it. <laughs> after waiting months, her story was like, oh yeah, here you go. Or well, like, with the whole um, Ash and Misty thing, my friend and I fought for the longest time about this because she thought Misty and Brock should be together because Misty's, <laughs> always, like, <laughs> Misty's always pulling him away from all these pretty girls. And I'm like, no, Misty no. and Ash. And she's See, like, the, no, Misty and Brock. I'm, I, don't, I don't care what they're, what I've been told. I I always get the feeling that that Brock is significantly older than everyone else there. He took care of his siblings for his yeah, dad. He was, he was a gym leader. Like whenever I'm told, oh, he's 13. And that's, yeah, Brock was a gym leader. And that's kind of sketchy. Go for exactly. He's like he's like he stands like a whole head and a half above Ash too. So it's like I don't think he's I don't think he's he 13. He just matured. Ash hasn't hit puberty yet. 
Yeah. That is true. No, no. You hear his voice. Oh, it drops. Yeah. Yeah, it I does. remember that. It does. Gary's gets worse. I forget. What does Gary sound like eventually? My name's Gary Oak. Really? He goes through reverse. You can't ignore my girth. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the second time he's now, made that joke. He's now a poet. And it's really what? Bad. Wait, Gary's a, a poet? Yeah, one of them. A poet, yeah. <laughs> one of his poems is, stay healthy and strong and you'll never go wrong. Uh... And I'm like, Whoa! stop. This did he end up try- did he end up giving up trying to be a Pokemon trainer? Because yeah, I Pretty suck at much. this. But I no, suck at this. But I no, could- actually, I read a thing on like the the Bulbapedia, like the Pokemon Wikipedia. It said he only lost three times over the course of the entire like anime. He lost to Giovanni, to Ash, and to Mewtwo. I think was that it. No, it was Giovanni and Ash. But who was the third? Person? I don't know who the third was. But the point is, only losing three times. Like Ash has lost more than that. That's because so, Ash. Con- that's Ash loses no matter- to every gym. That's that's the depressing time. thing. They don't. That's actually what a lot of people have been complaining about who actually, like, if you've ever seen some of the complaints about the anime, in the most, apparently in the ending of the most recent series, not the one that's on currently, but the one right before it, the only reason he ended up losing is because the guy right at the end was using nothing but legendaries. Jeez, that's he used, What was it? He, he was using Darkrai, and then he threw out another legendary, he, was, he threw out Reggie Ice right after that. Jeez. Well, I, it, you do have to sort of feel bad for Ash because he's in this never-ending cycle where as long as Pokemon keeps making money, he'll never actually become a Pokemon master. I'd also like to point out that he's also he's also in the same cycle of eternal youth because the, his <laughs> yes. head parasite, also known as Pikachu, <laughs> is con- it's, he's completely lost motor control and his and his you know his mental abilities are, are obviously what, in which, which season but he did, will live forever. In which season did he switch his hat? Because I know he has like a green one now. Um, he switched it like four times now. He I think. switched. Watched it when he first went to um, Hoenn, and the, then Sinnoh, and now Unova. Yeah, no. so he switched it for. See, I like so I like the original hat though. It's also, classic. I don't like his new costume in Unova. <laughs> no, I haven't liked it. Since How does Jodo. he become a Pokemon master though? What does that entail? Wait, what is He's that? not. You have to beat the Elite Four. He forgets beat that the Elite Four. Job. He's never fought the Elite Four. No, no he, he entered never. the Pokemon League and then lost to Richie. No, no, oh, wait, no. Oh, he right. beat Lance though. He should technically be a. Uh, I don't remember him beating Lance. Yeah, he did. And I believe in the Orange Island, he beat a, he beat Lance. Wait, wait, wait. I remember wait. he fought Lorelai. I don't. Maybe no, I'm I just pretty never... sure he beat Lance I don't, with wait. a Pikachu against his his half a dozen Dragonites. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I remember, I remember there that. was like a tournament thing, and yeah, yeah, he like the I'm Pikachu gonna have to look this up, but I sprang in the air using its tail as a spring. Why do I oh, remember this? I remember. Yeah, I, remember I don't remember watching it. I remember reading it in like a little yeah, book. Yeah, I, I have I those the, books. I have I almost that. all the of them. But yeah, yeah that, was, that was another thing that kind of bothered me. Lance only showed up like in a grand total of two episodes of the show, and Lance should have been in more of it because Lance was awesome. Yeah. He's pretty awesome. Well, in the comic, he's pretty he's, he's much evil. He's and, terrifying. And you, you don't understand. He's a sociopath in the comic. <laughs> it, so is everyone else. It seems weird that like Ash has literally met like every single legendary Pokemon and gone on all these like amazing adventures and the chosen one over and over again. And he's and got he, what seventeen Pokemon total, not including like the fifty plus Tauros he has. <laughs> right, and the and just the fact that he like. He can never win. You know, he can never actually beat the Elite Four. Well, that, you know who I is. miss? Muck. Oh, oh my I God. miss his Muck. Why? That thing, it was so it's cute. Hilarious. It was always cute? like... It's a pile of slime. No, because it, was it, it, it loved to cuddle. It always used that to like climb thing. on Professor Oak when he was I talking remember to that. Ash. Yeah. It was the happiest Pokemon, too. He was so it, happy. It always bothered me he didn't use that Muck more because there was he never... A, whenever that, he used Muck... He, he used it in that tournament once. Yeah, no, and Muck never lost. No matter what fight he was in, Muck never, never lost. How do you beat a Muck? That's a thing. It's like a puddle. Remember that, that? That it's like a Logia from One Piece. Bellsprout. Oh, hey, I got an idea. Fump. Yeah, beat this. It's a pile of sludge. Okay. That's true. <laughs> um, one, thing, on. one thing I wanted to talk about getting back to the movie was something I'm sure uh, Jeremy will be very interested to talk about, which is how the weather and nature works, apparently, in the Pokemon universe, it's based good. on uh, Professor Oak little drawing of ocean currents oh, God. and all that. Uh, here's something here's the, oceanographer. The funny thing is, though, is that the ocean current thing isn't that inaccurate. What bothered me was the fact that nobody had bothered to actually research this, you know, before there was a... Co- you figured they noticed. A, a natural disaster. That insane of a current underneath the water. Oh, no, yeah. And that's just it, though. Well, this current's been here, but we're not sure what it does. So let me get this straight. Let me, let me, see, if I can, let me see if I can understand this. You have mutant monsters running around the world, and you, and you see this giant current underwater, and it's an enormous current, even by your standards... And you've never bothered to look into it. 
They've been busy doing research on the mutant monsters. Yeah, and that is true. But then there's they also show episodes where they just they're researching the stupidest things. There's a there's a giant current in between these three islands that are that are rumored to have three of super powered ver- three super powered of uh, these j- these mutants living <laughs> on it. And you've never bothered to check out the giant current that runs in that? between them. Or the government was behind the scenes the entire time orchestrating. That's another good point. Are there any government in Pokemon aside from the Officer Jennies? The government. Uh, they are there's the government. The organization of Team Rock. I don't think it's a government. They're not. No, they're not a government. They're a criminal. That's another thing a about mafia. Pokemon. Does it, does it make anyone else uncomfortable that the only Italian in Pokemon is the leader of organized crime? Nope. <laughs> yeah, I think the only American is Lieutenant Surge. And he's the a Lightning Vietnam American War veteran. Yeah, really. And he's also Guile. Apparently, he's a Guile lookalike too. He really. Is. I didn't think about that. Yeah, and then and then of course we get the lovely moment at the end when the movie's all over and then the ocean current rises into the air ah! and then and then falls back down without causing any damage yeah, at all. Wait, wait. I think what really bothered me about that is I could just imagine just people just walking by. Hey, hey, look at that thing. Nope, there's nothing there. But what about no, 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 no? There's nothing the there. <laughs> no. What bothered me most about that scene, and I pointed this out during the movie, remember all the Pokemon that walk there on the ice? <laughs> oh, yes. And yeah. they were standing there. They're riding on the Gyaradoses. No, they <laughs> weren't. No, because they showed that scene of them swimming back, and there was no fighting or land Pokemon right in the water. Ones. No, there they was all drowned. One of them. How do you think they got rid of all their nemesis? Is <laughs> Nemeses. <laughs> Nemeses. That are Team Rocket. I know. Got them all their magic that was another while. really annoying plot point. Like, it seems like they just. They don't know what to do. They just. Then why are they here? <laughs> they just put that scene in the movie just so they could put in the trailers to get people like, oh my gosh, there's so many Pokemon in this. You know, that's my thinking. Why that's are they general, here I then? <laughs> they don't know what to do. Then why don't you tell them what to do? Maybe they could help slow down the giant, the, the, the three giant angry birds that yeah, are trying to I stop feel me. Like that many Pokemon could there's have done like, something. There's I like a couple thousand of them, and there's only three of them. I'm pretty sure they can help. Right, and then I think Luke even says something like, "They don't, they don't know what to do. The only one that can save the world is the chosen one." Then why don't they help me? <laughs> exactly. It's like it's what are you doing? Them can pitch up they don't have to say. They don't have to. They could just get the assist. See, score. Think, of, think about how, how cool that would have been. Like to have thousands Your of bags. Pokemon fighting. The three legendary that birds. That's been like, the coolest fight scene ever. Exactly. Budget. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah you see them flying probably everywhere, that. though. They'd be shooting all the Pokemon, or, flying and flipping. Or, or here's a, here's a, here's a here's a brain teaser for you. Um, there were a bunch of Pidgeots there. There's a good chance that Ash's Pidgeot was amongst amongst them. Why didn't that Pidgeot? Why didn't Ash's Pidgeot just fly him to the third island? How big are Pidgeots? They're like tw- they're like is they're like as big as one of the legendary birds. Yeah, would, they're pretty, they're pretty decently sized. I don't have them registered in my Pokedex. So I can't check. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they're about as, yeah, they're about I'm as very ashamed of you, Clara. They're about How as big as you. Of the birds. I didn't know they were that big. I they're huge. They were small. <laughs> Pidgeotos are small. Pidgeots are enormous. So they yeah, they're this. about. They're a little bit over four feet tall. I'm pretty sure. They're hu- I mean, they're huge. What? Interesting. Um, and then terrifying. one other thing I noticed. I think we talked about this a little bit more watching the movie. Like when Lugia, you know, when uh, the the collector guys trying to capture him at the very end of the movie and Lugia shows off his hyper beam and just completely like wrecks what's left of his ship. It's like, you know, if Pokemon ever decided to like rise up against humans, we would stand no chance. Especially the- since these people have not developed firearms. Apparently. Like that was another thing. Like if these birds are apparently no, like did. causing cannons. causing these and weather the problems, you know, that are gonna destroy the world, why doesn't like the, the nations of the world just be like, Okay, let's nuke the birds and so we can save the world? Well, you know? Because no one like because no one likes drumsticks in that world because apparently. They're... Fish is a fish they talk <laughs> about killing magic carps a lot in that series, but they never really talk about killing the birds. I think like the birds beat them every time. Like, all right, we got you no. this time, Pidgey. And it's, it's because like, there's no central government in this city, in this no, civil. Not apparently, even that. it's like there's no government. Period. Yeah, well, I think it well, was wiped out. Well, what, what sort of government would let their kids go out at ten with these mutant monsters well, and just be like, all right, fend for yourselves? The Hunger Games. Well, well clearly, one. no, clearly it's a government that doesn't have any adults. So uh, apparently, well, there's the theory that Pokemon is after nuclear war that all the adults have gone and died in this war, and that's why they're only yeah. children. Well, but if it was, I, if it was I post a nuclear theory. war, like the the world would be like. Well, that's really why they're Pokemon up. because, like, in the first generation, they resemble animals a lot. And then they get so worse. And then they, and now like, they have ice cream. No, yes, now they're ice cream and, and garbage. Like an yeah. and all of I'd like to point out that, there, that Garbodor was not the first pile of garbage as a Pokemon. It was Grimer. It right? was Grimer, yeah. Well, Everyone forgets yeah. about Grimer and Voltorb. 
Uh, well, sorry, because they're annoying. Andrew, what were you saying earlier? I was saying that the, the reason why there, this isn't the, this place is so habitable is because they uh, this is the only part of the world that wasn't destroyed by the nuclear bombs. But it's like, but like all the roads like, are overgrown and well, there's like multiple nations, you know, or not, maybe not nations, but regions at least. You know, like there's like you've said, the Orange Islands, Kanto, you know, Johto, Hoenn, Nova. Nova. Nova is supposed to be uh, supposed to be New York. Really? Yeah, well, Castellium is. is supposed to be like modeled after New York and the desert behind it. This yeah. is a theory that it was destroyed by Curium, the legendary ice type Pokemon thing. And its original height was nine foot eleven inches, but now it's nine foot ten inches. Yeah, apparently someone what? in Game Freak thought, "Huh, maybe that's a little bit pushing it." Well, no, wasn't yeah. Ground Zero in one of those? Like, it was yeah, that was to the be, desert yeah. behind yeah. it, which was destroyed by Curium. <laughs> wow, that was and that was that like yeah, it's pushing, pushing it. A little it. Bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit bad. Well, don't get me wrong; I'm not. I don't get too uh, much up in arms about it. But does, that's really pushing does it. Does anybody remember the, the episode in the first season when the Tentacruels start destroying the city and yeah, like that was giant banned because of nine eleven? Also. The, Alien invasion one. That's where I saw it. They're flying down, abducting people. <laughs> those things were terrifying. Have you guys ever played those in the uh, Pokemon Tentacru- Stadium game? Remember, unstoppable. Tentacruel is the Zubat of the sea. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Pretty much. It's a poison type. It pops up every three steps, and it's faster than your Pokemon, so it will be obnoxious. <laughs> those things are like and its special defense is ridiculous. Yes. Oh, and it can learn, and it knows Supersonic too. So just to make you mad. Yeah, nice. those things are the worst. <laughs> and the last thing I want to bring up about the movie was a. Uh, a little bit from when they're then they're first on the island. It's right before the Krabby's line, actually, where they're all dancing to this festival and it's like Caribbean music, that was, but they're dressed up with like that's racist, it was like Aztec. It was like yeah, Aztec masks. Uh, that's another one. I think in the Japanese version, it was like more appropriate music, and then Four Kids was like, nope, Caribbean. Yeah, it's like hey, let's and offend everyone pizza. at once. It worked. And then there are gondolas. And yeah, and then it's like Italy, too. Like, what's going well, on They were here? eating pizza, remember? Because they had the pizza on the table. Yeah, it's actually. <laughs> so it's like part America, part Italy, Caribbean. Four kids so, they're, so they went to so they went to Las Vegas. Yeah, basically. Apparently. I don't like the Florida Keys. You hit the jackpot. Nice. All right, so I guess uh, what were everyone's overall thoughts about the movie? My sort of thinking is like, you know, as as just as a older, like, more critical watcher of movies, you know, putting nostalgia aside, like it's really not that great of a film, you know, compared to like some of the other movies we reviewed for this, like sort of, sort of the stranger or the cowboy for truth is better. <laughs> no, I, no, I no, 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 <laughs> or, or like the cowboy bebop movie. Like those are far better than this. But if, if, if you're just a kid or you want to show this to your kids or whatever, like it, it, it still captures your imagination. It still got some cool moments, you know, and some things that even adults will find funny. Like we've talked about, there are a couple jokes that are actually pretty good. So I, I I give this movie overall a positive uh, review, I think. Uh, what do you think, Andrew? Uh, nostalgia is a powerful, powerful thing. And, <laughs> now my, and now I don't want to watch half the stuff from my childhood. But I do. But it did make me want to watch the Digimon movie again. I, I do oh, want to do that. Oh, which one? Uh, the first one. <laughs> okay. How many were there? There's like six. I, I, I stopped. Yeah. I'd only watched religious in the first one. I know there are like other. I think they're like directed TV like movies. Yes. Mm-hmm. The, Those were not. The I've, I've watched a, the Nostalgia Critic did a review of the Digimon movie, like the first one. The problem is, is that that wasn't the first one. It wasn't. Are no, you sure? The one they showed was not the first Digimon movie. What's the first one then? The first one is. It's like maybe like the first ten minutes of that movie was the entirety yes. of the first one. Yeah. Oh, the, the well, first one we saw was like they the first said. Three. They said that um, that that the first bit, you know, the opening bit where it's like them as like really little kids. That was like something that they aired in Japan, and that's what like it did successful enough that they made the rest of the movie. The problem with it being though that it's basically three short stories condensed yes. into one movie, and there's almost no connection between there them. Well, they, they transcended generations because the middle one was like the first generation, and the second one, the what? third one was the second generation of kids. And I love the middle story because that fight scene when they fought on the internet was awesome. Yes. Oh, that also, was did cool. anyone else find it really funny? This is actually as a, uh, this is really off topic, but I remember in Digimon, the first two series apparently didn't count because they were made up in the in the world that Digimon takes place, and they were a TV show. Wait, oh, what? Yeah. Do you oh, yeah. remember that? Anyone else? I didn't watch that far. I do. I I didn't like the third season. So the show was fake because it was a show inside the show. Yes, it's It's a show inside the show. Because (laughs) then they played. Then they played Digimon. 
What? Yeah. In, in the third series, it was a card game. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't like the third series, so what? I just the tried third? to ignore It was that. pretty bad. No, actually, like, I didn't watch the third series much when I was a kid because I was starting to grow older, but, like, I I've read um, like uh, Yezu Otaku, who's this anime reviewer on thatguywiththeglasses.com. Uh, she's done a couple of videos on it, and looking back on it, like, that one is far darker than any oh, of yes. the other Jigsaw. It's, oh, it's really yeah, uncomfortable at times. It also, and then, for, when Where I would have been, uh, and then for a while, uh, do, do, what's the name of the red dig, about of the red Digimon? He's the the lizard Agumon? one. Uh, no, no, it's um Gyumon. Which one? Gyumon. Yeah, Gyumon. Yeah. Oh yeah. For a while, it's like he's kind of weird, and then I find out at the end he's a virus type. Really? Hmm. He's really? One of them. I had a little toy of him, and it was really. <laughs> I was really surprised by that, and then then you see what his final digivolution is. It's like that's terrifying. Yeah, it's terrifying. But no, it's well, no, no. I'm not talking about the giant lizard. I'm talking about Gallantmon. Oh, yeah. Well, that's not terrifying. He's just a knight. No, it, no, but then he he has two final forms. One of them is the super lizard of doom. Oh right. And then there's Gallant Gallant Mom, still kind of scary looking. He goes, "Hey, I'm just gonna run you well, right through." That, that's because I'm the most violent <laughs> Digivolution ever. That's how like both Digimon and Pokemon seem to work. Like the first forms are cute and cuddly, and then by the end they're much they're more ridiculous. intimidating. Gyomon's yes. not cute and cu- he's only kind. of... That was another thing. Is Gyomon a he or a she? It's a he. It's a he. Yeah. It's okay. Me. It was always kind of ambiguous. It's like I remember once or twice in the show they referred to Gyomon as a she. Hmm. I don't. I don't. I've. It's been but they've so also, long. They've referred His to him as. Voice was a little annoying. Yeah. <laughs> must yes. watch this It was. Show again. He wasn't really cute in the in, like. Maybe maybe you thought his, his doddering was cute for some people, but I thought he never really struck me as cute. And he got re- he was just he was really destructive. Yeah. Terrier Mon, that was the one that was cute. I love Terrier Mon. I have a crush on uh. that. <laughs> All right, so uh, back to Pokemon. Kenny, what yes. did you think of the movie? I give it two and a half thumbs up. Out of what? How many thumbs? Like four. <laughs> 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 no, I right. liked it. It was good. I mean, I remember from my childhood, I was a lot more idealized. I'll give it that. Watching it now, it's just funny actually seeing the stuff that we missed. <coughs> and as a movie as a whole, you're right. It's kind of, you know, you can obviously tell it's geared toward kids, but it's still fun rewatching it. Exactly. Uh, Jeremy? Hey, it's an enjoyable movie. Um, for those of you who weren't into Pokemon growing up, I'm going to say skip it. For those of you who were, go ahead and rewatch it. It's a nice little trip down Nostalgia Lane. My advice is, of course, bring some friends along to watch this yes. one. Don't do it by yourself. Funny. Uh, yeah, don't do it by yourself because then you just look like that that sad, lonely guy. <laughs> that one guy. What if you don't have friends? Then you are that sad, lonely <laughs> oh, guy. Oh. We're sorry, listeners. No, I'm not <laughs> sorry. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, I am not going to apologize for that one. Right. Uh, Mark, what was your thoughts? I would definitely say that I enjoyed it nonetheless, you know, even though that it's not quite as good as how we remember it as kids, but... You know, there were still funny jokes, oh, and yeah. the animation was still nice. So, you know. There's more jokes when you're older. Yeah. A- actually, I was going to say, actually, it's funnier now that we're older because yeah. we get a lot of those jokes. For example, like, even the Weight Watchers joke. Like, even I though it, even got, though it's yeah. simple to, like, understand. As a kid, I didn't know what Weight Watchers was, so I didn't. Yeah, and they referenced it, so yeah. that's really funny yeah. they did. I'm like, sure the Japanese version didn't. Yeah. Actually, I don't know. might have. Well, probably not. I'm not yeah. sure how popular Weight Watchers was in Jap- Japan. Japan at the time. <laughs> Uh, Clara, how about you? Um, well, the bad guy I thought wasn't as scary as and he was useless. when I was little, but like in other movies, like the Celebi movie, that the bad guy in that one I was scared of because he was turning Celebi evil, and it was so sad. You want to you want to see the villain? You want to see the Pokemon movie with the scary villain? Watch Jirachi Wishmaker. Oh yeah, I've seen that one. That one's crazy. Psycho I mean, Groudon. Oh, according, yeah. like oh, yeah, yeah, in comparison to all the other ones, he was the more like crazy. Not surpri- not so not so bad. I I'm mean, surpri- he just wanted a collection, but I mean, he was going about it the wrong way. I'm just going to say this right now though, and I I'm I'm just prolonging this now, but I'm kind of surprised they didn't make a movie just about Cyrus. Yeah, he was he's terrifying. He's he was downright really terrifying. He's crazy. He a little. People may need the room, yeah. Oh. Okay. But, Very uh, good. Yeah. I liked it. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you guys very much for listening to this episode of Shred beep, Cells. Beep, beep. You can email us at techheads at avwproductions.com. You can follow us on Twitter at techheadsou. Like us on Facebook. Uh, subscribe to us on iTunes. You know, Give us good ratings, all that good stuff. Thank you guys for joining me for this very special episode of Shredded Cells. Um, I guess uh, we'll figure out what we're going to do next time. Uh, these cartoons. Yes, that's the, that's the theory I have that I'd like to do. We'll talk about that later. 
Um, so Did somebody say Samurai Jack? <laughs> and we'll Definitely see. And. So thank you very much for listening, and we'll guys see you guys in two weeks. Bye. 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 Help. This product is copyright AVW Productions 2012.